Good morning, everyone. Bom dia, as we say in Brazil and Portuguese. It's nice to be here with you, and I'm very happy and very pleased that John Calvin School has chosen to support the Brazil mission in this fundraiser this year. It's a real blessing for us, and it's exciting for us to know that you guys are thinking about the work in Brazil and supporting the work in Brazil and uh, doing what you can to support and promote the spread of the gospel in the nation of Brazil. And this year, it's, it's an exciting year because it's the 50th anniversary of the mission in Brazil. And so what I'm gonna do to start out with is just introduce you here. You can see on the map, I hope you can see that fairly clearly. You can see on the map, uh, it's a map of Brazil. And I'm just going to show you where the various churches are located and, and what is the presence of the Reformed churches in Brazil, uh, just to start out with. So I'm going to go from north to south. So first of all, we can see here, if you can see that arrow there, it's on the city. You probably can't read that, but it's the city of Fortaleza in the northeast. And there's a mission congregation in the city of Fortaleza. And if you go south, you go south along the coast through the city of Natal, then there's the city of João Pessoa, and there's a new mission congregation in the city of João Pessoa, and that is a mission congregation of the church in Esperança, which is a small town in the interior of that state, so about a couple hours away from João Pessoa. And then we keep going down south a little bit further, if you can see that the city of Recife. And the city of Recife is an important city for the Reformed Churches of Brazil. That's basically in this area is where the Reformed Churches of Brazil started. So if we go a little bit, we zoom in a little bit, you can see Recife is a large city and we go south along the coast following that arrow to the town of São José da Coroa Grande and a little bit farther south yet to the city of Maragogi. So we're just gonna zoom right in there. And those are two small towns on the coast and that's where the Reformed Churches of Brazil got their start. When Reverend Van Spronsen was there when he started his work, he started his work in São José da, da Coroa Grande and from there, over the years, the work spread. And now we have churches in, as we go north here, churches in Recife. And this is where uh, the John Calvin Institute, which is the seminary of the churches, which is really the, the main part of my work now, this is where the seminary is located in, uh, on the edge of this city here in Aldea, which is uh, a neighborhood very near Recife. So that's where the seminary is located and that's really a large part of the work that I do and, and a large part of the work that Pastor John Chase is also going to be doing. And he's gonna be speaking more about his work and what he's doing to prepare for, uh, to go to Brazil. So from Recife, we go down south. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Uh, we go to uh, this is the state of Pernambuco here. And we go south to the state of Alagoas, which is where Maceo is located. Maceo is the large city in the capital of the state of Alagoas. And that's where Pastor Brum de Graff is working in the Hamilton mission. And also to the interior of the state of Alagoas is another mission congregation in a town call, called Olio d'Agua das Flores. And that's another relatively new mission congregation. So there we see you, see, you can see that in the Northeast, there's a lot of activity of the Reformed churches in Brazil. Now I'm gonna zoom out again. I'm gonna put that map a little bit further out. Then we go down south towards the center and there's a mission congregation in Brasilia, which is the capital of Brazil. And that's an interesting situation here because as we zoom in on Brasilia, we can see that near Brasilia is a place called Unai. 
And Unai is where there was a Dutch colony. There is a Dutch colony. And the immigrants from Holland there also started a church uh, in Unai. And that's also part of the Reformed churches in Brazil. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit again. And we're going to go a little further south again. And we go down to the state of Rio de Janeiro, a very well-known city. Rio de Janeiro is right here on the coast. And a little bit north of the city of Rio de Janeiro is another Reformed church, uh, the Reformed Church of Cabo Frio. And Cabo Frio has a mission congregation, again going south, in the state of Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is the largest city in Brazil. And the mission congregation is in the city of Caraguatatuba, which is on the coast of the state of Sao Paulo. So that's really what we're going to be focus on, focusing on because that is the project that you are going to be supporting. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that project. But first, I'm just going to go through this a little bit more just to let you know what else is going on in Brazil. Uh, Sao Paulo, the city of Sao Paulo, last year, uh, Pastor Elianai Batista started a mission work in the city of Sao Paulo. And that's very exciting. It's exciting for the Reformed churches to be working in the largest city in Brazil. It's a city uh, that has 20 million people in it, if you can imagine that. It's a megalopolis. It's a huge city. And when, when you fly over it, when you visit it, you can see just how large that city is. Just imagine the difference between Sao Paulo and, and Yero. It's like an infinite difference between the sizes. So that's a, a very good location for us to be because it's a center, it's a center of the country. And so from there, the gospel can spread out to other areas in the country as well. So it's a very important place to be. Now, also, one final place as we keep going south is the city of Curitiba. And in Curitiba, there's another mission church, a church plant, and, and that's a, a church plant and a mission that's being done by Pastor Adriano Gama. And I'm sure some of you will remember him from a while ago. Was it last year or two years ago when, when uh, we were there? Pastor Adriano, Pastor Iraldo. Pastor Iraldo is the missionary who's working in Brasilia. Uh, Pastor Adriano is working in Curitiba. And also there was Elder Ademir, who was with us at the presentation at John Calvin School. And so you, you'll remember Pastor Adriano, and he's working in Curitiba. And he has a thriving ministry there and a, a small mission congregation that he's working on developing and spreading the gospel there in another important city in the south of Brazil. And so as you get down that far, you're getting close to the countries of Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina. So Brazil is a huge country. As you can see, it's most of South America. Most of our churches are here in the Northeast. And then there's, there are small churches spread out in various parts of the country. So I'm going to be focusing here on, especially on Caraguatatuba. It's a, it's a name that even Brazilians have a hard time pronouncing. Caraguatatuba. It's a, a native name uh, of Brazilian natives. And it's a city of a couple of hundred thousand people, which in Brazilian standards is not very big. And it's located right on the coast. And you can see that Sao Paulo, the capital, is a couple hours away. So uh, if you, for me, when I, was, when I visited there a couple times, I would fly into Sao Paulo, uh, land in Sao Paulo, and then I would take the bus to go to Caraguatatuba, a couple hours on the bus to get there. And it's a beautiful place. It's on the coast. It's a tourist area. So a lot of people will go from Sao Paulo to Caraguatatuba uh, for their vacation. There's a lot of vacation places there, uh, hotels and places that, that businesses own. They'll own a business and they'll, uh, they have, it's like a hotel or a hostel where employees from that business will go. So they can go there and they can visit and they can visit the beach and enjoy the beautiful uh, nature, uh, God's creation there. And a few years ago, a young man named Kleber began to plant a Reformed church in Caraguatatuba, Kleber Salis. 
And he's now an elder of the church of Cabo Frio. And this mission work is now under the supervision of the church in Cabo Frio. And the church has continued to grow. There have been baptisms, new members, and they have about 50 people in the congregation. And, and it continues to grow. And, and Elder Kleber is working very hard. He's, he's leading the worship services on Sunday. He's doing Bible studies. He's doing outreach programs or leading outreach programs with the members. And people continue to come to the church. And God has really blessed this mission work. And it's been a, a great blessing in that city. And so this is going to be the project that John Calvin School, the, stu the you students are gonna be supporting and we're very excited about that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some pictures of that project. And I'm gonna open up another window here. And the project is called Reformar. And you can see the logo there, it's a cute little turtle. And the name is important, Reformar. And you can see that in, in English it's reform. So it's a, a reform church project. And the, the, the word reformar in Portuguese means, it's a verb, it means to reform. But it's also a kind of a play on words because it's reform combined with the word mar. And mar in Portuguese means sea or ocean. So what this project is working to do is to do a work of uh, environmental protection, of, of working with, uh, the natural environment, but doing that in a very specific way. So this is not just an environmental program. This is an evangelistic program. And what the, the mission congregation in Caraguatatuba is working to do is, first of all, clean up and, and work to, to clean up the beaches in, in, in Caraguatatuba and also to spread the gospel and to do that with young people and with kids and to show that really the, what we are created to do, we're created in God's image, we're created to rule the earth, to govern the earth, to develop the earth, and to take care of it. So we're supposed to be good stewards of the earth. And that's an important part of who we are and what we do. And that's one of the things that they wanna teach is that the reformed faith has to do with all of our life. It's not just about what you do on Sundays, it's not just about going to church, it's not just about participating in the worship services, but it has to do with how we work. It has to do with how we play. It has to do with how we interact with people. And it also has to do, has to do with how we care for the creation that God has entrusted to us. And so that's why uh, a teacher in the congregation, Simone, who's a member of the congregation, she's a teacher, she started this organization as a means of outreach, as a means of evangelism, and as a means to do something practical on behalf of the church uh, to help in the local community. So it's very exciting for them to be receiving support from Canada, and uh, it'll be a real blessing for the city of Caraguatatuba. So that's Reformar. And you can see here on this picture, uh, the group of people from the congregation who have been working in this project. And you can see there that they're in the recycling center, they're posed in the recycling center there, uh, with some of the things that they brought in and they've been cleaning up the beaches and doing that work there. Now, I'm going to flick through some of these pictures and these are some of the people that are involved. That's Simone, the teacher, and uh, some of the kids that are involved in the project and they're uh, learning about the process of what happens with the things that they take in and the garbage that's cleaned up and this is them at work on the, uh, in the park, in the ocean side there. And they've got their bags and they've got everything ready and their they're, they're gloves on and they're ready to do that dirty work. And here they are posed in front of a kiosk by the beach. And so they, they have uh, t-shirts which, which show what they're up to and they talk to people and they invite people to, to let them know what they're doing and to spread the gospel as well. So this is the, the project and then I'm just gonna flick backwards through the pictures to show you what happens afterwards. This is in the church, and the, 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 the church building itself is actually in the front of Elder Kleber's house. And so after they do their project, they have a little seminar. And here you can see the, the leader of the group that she's giving a little seminar on uh, what they were doing and why they're doing it. So to teach the kids 
about why they're doing this project. And so that's just a very brief introduction, and that's Elder Clever. That's, uh, he's the elder of the congregation, and uh, we're very thankful for him and for the work that he's doing. It's been, he's been a real blessing for the Reformed churches in Brazil, and especially for the Reformed church in Caraguatatuba. So that was a, a brief introduction to the project. And as I said, we're very thankful, and Clever and Simone are very thankful, as well as the kids that are involved in the project, that they'll be able to expand the project, that they'll be able to promote the project and uh, promote the gospel, the full message of the gospel in Caraguatatuba and, and work towards, as they work towards, the institution of the church in Caraguatatuba. So this contribution is very valuable for them and, and it's a blessing to be a part of it. So that's very briefly an introduction to what's going on in Brazil, just in a very broad way, and specifically what's going on in Caraguatatuba. And I look forward to hearing how things are going over the next month. And uh, once again, thanks to you all for your support. And I ask that you also continue to pray for the mission work in Brazil and for the churches in Brazil. And may God bless all that we're doing.